Amen. So um, in the time that we're living in, a lot of people are talking about end times. And for with good reason, um, with the, the wars and um, the things that are happening overseas, um, things that are happening even in our own country, um, lots of lots of ungodliness, lots of things that are happening uh, to people, things that are happening. Uh, just just doesn't seem to be good when you turn on the news, does it? And a lot of preachers and a lot of people have been talking about end times. And so what does that mean? Uh, well, one thing that when I was praying when we first began doing the, the home um, Facebook Live services was, um, God, do we need to talk about this pandemic? Do we need to talk about it? And yeah, I think God led us to talk some about that. But for the most part, uh, most of the messages that God has led me to preach and, and devotions from his word uh, have been about just our daily living, things that we need to continue doing, things that we need to start doing, sin and salvation and, and just family life and, and all of those things that we still need to um, be seeking and searching God's word for, which has the answers for living, right? It's, uh, it's in a book of instruction from God to us. Uh, and so we really haven't talked about uh, end times very much. And so tonight God led me kind of to talk about uh, end times for Christians, okay? End times for Christians. And, and certainly any time that, that I preach, I don't w want to try to scare people, but, uh, you know, God's word is God's word. Uh, and if you believe it to be the, the only truth uh, and the word of God, inspired by God, uh, then we need to have some healthy fear for it. Uh, a healthy fear of God. And I'm not talking about a, ooh, scared. I'm talking about a reverence. Uh, and to what his word says, and to know that God knows, okay? Um, and we take comfort and we take hope in that. I know I've talked to several people from the congregation to friends about things that kind of scare them, and, um, and there's, there's lots of things that are happening in our world that are certainly seem to be addressed in God's word. Uh, and so tonight, uh, we're going to look at just a small portion of it. I've got several uh, other references um, that we're not going to have time for tonight, uh, but if that's something that you're interested in reading, I always want to try to help people uh, understand God's Word and what it says about um, situations in life and all of life. And so um, if you want some more um, places to go, cross-references, other things in the Bible about some end times, some, some common things, um, I can certainly give you those if you'll send me a um, a private message or even a text or call and I'll, I'll certainly have those for you but tonight we're going to be in Jude all right and um, Jude um, is actually a, a, a book written it's just it's just one chapter 24 verses 25 excuse me um, and I think it's just 25 uh, yep uh, and Jude was Jesus's half-brother okay he was the brother to James they were half-brothers to Jesus and uh, and uh, there's several other Judes in the Bible, but this is the half-brother of Jesus. And, and what he is writing about uh, is he's writing about the apostasy of the day. Um, this is after Jesus, of course, was crucified and, and rose again. Uh, but whatever time this is after that, um, Jude is talking about the falling away uh, of Christians. And, um, and you can... And you can look back at verse 3, and I'm just, we're just going to reference that to start with. Um, it's not going to be the main part of our scripture, but verse 3 tells us why he wrote this letter to Christians. Uh, he wrote it to the early church and to early Christians, uh, and this is what was going on. Now, this will kind of this caught my eye uh, when I was studying this. It, verse 3 says this, Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that you should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. And so my best study and what, what other slot, slot smarter men than me have said about that verse um, is that Jude, his first plan was just to write a general letter of greeting and a salutation to the church and kind of um, give them some encouragement uh, to the saints. In other words, the truth gospel message that was delivered about uh, Jesus Christ, the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus, and, and all those things that go with that, um, there were people in the church that were perverting that, and they were going away from that, and they were adding to um, those different things, uh, the way I understand it. And and you can read on some more about Jude. It talks, gives you some Old Testament uh, references to Sodom and Gomorrah, uh, to, to um, Moses, 
to, even to Egypt um, when God destroyed um, the Egyptians. Uh, and of course, we know that uh, that Pharaoh's heart was hardened. Um, so you can you can read all that, but we're going to pick up with verse sixteen. Okay, and it's really some some interesting reading. Um, and again, talking about end times for the Christian, the Christian needs to know, I think, what the Bible says is going to happen. All right. Now we just we're just at the surface here, folks. It's it's not a very deep discussion. Um, but there's some things that are, people are talking about, things that are going on that are true, that are happening, and there's a lot of things that people are just making up. Um, I hate to use the word, uh, you know, false news uh, or fake news because that's been overused so much, um, but people are saying things that certainly are not scriptural, um, and it just maybe they've been doing it all along and we just haven't taken notice, or I haven't taken notice. And so uh, we pick up with verse 16, um, and, and he's ending talking about some of that Old Testament stuff uh, with what they're seeing, okay? Um, you can go back to verse 4 and talk about how uh, that men and uh, teachers had crept into the, to the temple and the teachings were ungodly. And again, and he talks about the judgment that's going to be on those in verse 15. But this is what verse 16 says. Read with me if you have your Bibles. These are murmurers, complainers, uh, walking after their own lusts, and their mouth speaketh great swelling words, having men's persons in admiration because of advantage. In other words, people were, were boasting and talking and trying to lead, and, and they were telling people what they wanted to hear for their own gain. Okay, now I, I know you, you might scorn me for this, but there's some people out there, and you see them on TV and you see them on social media, they're out there talking and they're talking loud about whatever it is that they're passionate about, uh, and it's only really for their own gain. Okay, it's not for the glory of God. It's not scriptural. The Bible calls it ungodly, if you want to read verse 15, uh, and those ungodly actions. And, and that's kind of some of the things that are happening now in the church. Um, we've got people that are divisive, and we're going to talk about that word uh, and how the Bible says there's not supposed to be any schism or division uh, in the body. Um, but these people that are murmurers, they're complainers. They're talking about uh, how things should be different, how uh, we should follow this, or we should listen to that, or we should let go of this, or we should latch on to that, and, and, and how, again, this is not uh, good change. Um, it's, it's things that are unscriptural and ungodly. Okay, in the church and in the world and what they were believing that was not scriptural. Okay, And so this is, let's pick up verse 17 now. But beloved, talking to the Christians here because you know that that word beloved means uh, to those people who follow Christ. But beloved, remember ye the words which were spoken before of the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ. Kind of a regrounding. Okay, Do you think you and I as Christians, we need to be regrounded in some things? Absolutely. We absolutely do need that. And the regrounding comes from restudying and rehashing and repraying over God's word and letting it speak to us about the truths that maybe we learned years ago and had forgotten. Or maybe we've let uh, social media creep in or somebody else's opinion creep in that's not godly. So again here, we're, we're going to remind you of some things Jude says, okay? Some things that you learn uh, from these godly men uh, about our Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 18, how that they told you there should be mockers in the last time. Again, there's where you see that word last time, right? Uh, mockers. Mockers are people that uh, scorn the Bible. They talk about how it's not uh, truth and talk about the things in it uh, are out of date or how they're uh, hate speech or how it's uh, just, you know, there's all kinds of mockers and people out there that talk about God uh, as um, not real or talk about Jesus Christ as not the Savior or talk about uh, anything that goes against what the Word of God says. And, and that's what these mockers are, okay? And so there should be mockers in the last time who should walk after their own ungodly lusts. You know, we live in a world that's the me generation, right? Everybody's out for what they can get. Uh, this one did this to me and I'm getting retribution. Or this one uh, has this and I'm going to get that. Or I'm going to get over this person because they shouldn't have more than me. Or just whatever, whatever the lust may be. Uh, but it says they walk after their own ungodly lust. In other words, things that God says uh, are not important. They go after um, and it's these things that uh, lead to sin, okay? Uh, and so that's what's happening in the last time. The Bible says, Jude says, that's how people are going to be in the last time. 
Does that sound familiar? Sounds a lot like today, doesn't it? Very selfish, very me-oriented, very get what I can get and don't worry about who you hurt or what you do to get it. Uh, and so that's kind of what the, he's talking about here. And then let's look at verse 19. These be they who separate themselves, sensual, having not the Spirit. Having not the Spirit means they're not Christians. The Bible says that it's the Holy Spirit that helps us understand God's Word. Uh, and the natural man, the person without the Holy Spirit, the standard comes from the Word of God. Okay? Uh, and so these people that are, that are in the church at the time, and this was back, you know, in early church days, Okay, and it's kind of similar to today. There's people uh, who se says separate themselves. In other words, they're divisive. They divide people, okay? You know, you can't turn on social media and somebody's not trying to separate uh, and divide and throw out just all kinds of things um, that maybe they're true, maybe they're not, but some things, even if they're true, need to be left unsaid. And they just they just do, and, and and we need to have a holy the Holy Spirit to guide our tongues and what we say and what we do. Uh, and if it's not based on love and forgiveness, um, then we need to be careful when we speak it. Okay, uh, and so but it says they they have uh, they who separate themselves. In other words, they're divisive, and we know uh, that the Bible says that there needs to be uh, no schism in the body. Uh, that word schism means a division. Uh, and so we, we shouldn't have any division uh, in the body of Christ. It should be all based on the Word of God uh, and prayer and talking to Him and letting the Holy Spirit uh, speak to us. Uh, but in last days, you're going to have these kinds of people not only out in the world, but in the church. <coughs> um, and so that makes me think, you know, that um, I used a, a, an example one time about how water um, water gets in everywhere, doesn't it? I know my dad, he um, has this shop that he built and he added it on to an old shop and, and he's always had problems off and on with the roof leaking. I mean, he never could find the leak. And I mean, he would tar that thing and cover that thing and he would patch that thing and, and never really knew where the leak was coming from, just trying to get at the seams and some of the flashing or the seam points, things like that. And the water would always get in some way, somehow. You know, that's kind of the way the enemy is with the church. You know, water destroys, and certainly when it freezes, it splits, right? Um, it, it just does that. Even in rock, when water gets in rock, it freezes, it busts the rock, and we know how tough rock is. That's exactly what Satan wants to do in the church. Um, he gets into people, sin, people start sinning instead of confessing sin and, 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 and confessing to one another their sins and talking to God about their <laughs> sin. Um, they let that sin fester and it builds up and, and, and ultimately it splits the church. It divides God's people. Um, and so um, I, I think we've got to be careful about that in end times because we're, we're going to have those people in the church and we've got to be very careful about that. Let's read on verse 20. But ye, beloved, building up yourselves uh, on your most holy faith, praying, uh, uh, praying in uh, the Holy Ghost. And so I think this, what this means is, is that we to, we're to build up our defenses against sin. The Bible says if we hide uh, God's word in our heart, uh, we'll sin less, right? Uh, we, we know this, that, that, that if we hide God's word in our heart, uh, that we'll sin less. And so we've got to study God's word. Uh, studying God's word in prayer is our defense building up uh, against those temptations uh, that lead to sin. And so I ran into this uh, quote, and, and I don't know who the author was, um, but it says, The antidote for sin is not simply to pull back from what is wrong, but also to be built up in what is right. You see, and I believe this, I believe that our brains can only hold so much. Uh, I mean, maybe it grows, maybe we get smarter, I certainly believe that, but uh, in a day-to-day -day life, we can only take in so much. And if you take in uh, the bad and you don't put the good in first, I think one will keep the other out. Uh, and so, again, that's kind of an opinion that I have, but the Bible certainly proves out that if we hide God's Word in our heart, we hide it so we may not sin against Him. Uh, and so we put in the good. We put in God's Word. Uh, we put in time with God in prayer. Uh, spending time with other Christians talking about good things and, and edification, the, the building up of the body, doing good works to one another and for one another. Um, and so I think that's the good um, that builds a barrier up against the bad. Um, I think with it, we're more, uh, we're kind of defenseless if we don't. Uh, because, you know, we have things going in through our ears and through our eyes all the time. 
uh, through our senses. Uh, <coughs> and some of the things we let in are good. Some of the things we let in are bad. You don't believe that? You get on uh, TikTok. You get on Instagram. You get on Facebook. And it doesn't take you long to see that there's a lot of bad out there, right? There's a lot of uh, things that people are posting that aren't godly. Uh, even people that are supposed to be godly uh, that are posting things that I, I just, it's hard to believe, isn't it? It's hard to believe. But you see, none of us are impervious to sin. All of us can fall susceptible to temptation. You don't believe it? Uh, you should have been at the dinner table with my family about 30 minutes ago. Uh, you should have been with us a Sunday evening. Uh, we're not in purpose, and we're certainly not perfect just because I'm a pastor and Lori's a pastor's wife and I've got uh, kids that I think are good kids. Just because of that doesn't mean we're impervious to hurt one another. doesn't mean we're impervious to sin and some of the things uh, that are out there. So we've got to be careful. So we've got to put in the good. And that's what it says right here in verse 19, or verse 20, excuse me. We've got to build up ourselves and not in a, a prideful sense, but build us up with the word of God so we can have a defense with prayer, uh, because it says right there, uh, most holy faith praying uh, in the Holy Ghost. And, and so lots to say there, but we've got to move on. Verse 21, keep yourselves in the love of God. Well, that's important, isn't it? How in the world can you talk about people? How can you post things about people? How can you say things uh, to their face, do things to hurt them if we're doing that right there, keeping ourselves in the love of God? It's impossible, isn't it? And so if we keep ourselves in the love of God, again, that's another key in last times uh, for these things we can do to build up our defense, right? It's look what it says, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. In other words, I think that's saying that uh, we have this promise of eternal life uh, for those who've trusted Jesus. And not only do we remember the mercy God had for us, but we need to turn around and show that same mercy to our fellow man. Uh, maybe somebody's screaming at the top of their lungs against something that you know is right and true in God's word. We still should show mercy and love to those people. It's tough, but think about how God shows mercy and grace to us. <clears throat> well, you think about your sins. I know if I think about my sins, boy, there's some whoppers. Now, if you want to put sin on a scale, I mean, I, I've got some, some big ones. Um, and, and God forgives if we confess our sins, God is faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And so um, we need to keep looking for uh, mercy and remembering the mercy Jesus has for us and show that same mercy uh, to others. And so moving on, verse 22, and if some have compassion, making a difference. Um, is it hard to have compassion on some people? I know it is. I know my family and friends have trouble showing compassion sometimes to me because I'm certainly not deserving. But who among us is deserving? Can you raise your hand and say, well, I'm, I'm deserving. You, get, you know, I'm deserving. None of us are. Our righteousness is as filthy rags. Isn't that what the Bible says? Uh, none of us could. No, not one. And so none of us are deserving. And, and so that's that's the, the goal for us as Christians is, is to understand we're not deserving and then turn around when we see people. And the first thing Satan's going to say is they're not deserving of salvation. They're not deserving of forgiveness. They're not deserving of love and, and compassion. But then God's Holy Spirit is saying to us, neither were you. And so that helps us in turn to show those people um, even even in these times, these people that are murmurs, these people that are speaking loud, just so people can, so they can be heard of themselves and what they get uh, for it. And so, verse twenty three, and others uh, saved with fear, pulling them out of the fire. Man, you know what I think that's a reference to? If they give their heart and life over to Him. They're out of hell and into heaven. I think that's exactly what that means right there. Save, save with fear. And in other words, that, that awe and reverence of God, when, when somebody humbles themselves uh, and understands that they're a sinner because they've been convicted uh, by the Holy Spirit from hearing God's word, they're, they're, they humble themselves and they call out to him and say, God, I'm a sinner and I want you to save me because I can't save myself. And it, and it literally pulls them out of the fire. Uh, and so pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garment spotted by the flesh. And so the last verse here, uh, we're going to spend some time with. Um, and uh, it, it spoke to me in several different ways. But let's read verse 24. 
It says, and he's closing out his letter here. He says, now unto them, uh, unto him that is able to keep you from falling. Now you can underscore that word keep right there. Uh, he used it again in verse one uh, in the word preserved. Uh, and it's used several times in, in the book of Jude. Uh, that word keep right there means to preserve. It means it's, it's holding on to something and keeping it uh, for something greater that's coming, preserving, making sure that it makes it to the end without spoil or ruin. And, and the Bible says that now to him that is able to keep you from falling. God is able to keep us. Uh, and, and, and I think this is a great verse right here to think about when we think about once saved, always saved. Uh, when you actually turn your heart and life over to Jesus and ask him to forgive you and to save you from your sins, God is able to keep us. God is able to secure us until when, Brother Andy? Well, until number one, if you die, okay, uh, to be absent from the body, present with the Lord, right? That's a keeping, that's a preserving, that's a promise in God's word to Christians. But it can also mean for the coming of the Lord, the day of the Lord, the Bible calls it in several different places, when Jesus is going to come back. Uh, and, and he's coming back to claim those uh, who are saved, those who have died in Christ and those who are still living as Christians. And so there's a promise right there that <coughs> our salvation is secure and to keep us from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. Now, you want a great study? You study that word faultless right there, okay? Now, the, the song that Lori sang earlier, the, the last verse in it says that, says that we're going to stand faultless before the throne. You know what that word faultless means? It means blameless. It means as sinners, as unholy as we are in our flesh, <clears throat> we're going to stand before God as holy, sinless creatures. Not because of anything we've done, because in these, in these bodies we're sinful, right? Not because of anything we've done other than following after the Lord Jesus Christ and asking him to save us and forgiving us of our sins. And it's his blood that cleanses us from all unrighteousness. We're going to be able to stand before God one day, uh, and and I don't know if we'll be on our knees. I don't, I don't know what will happen. I, I picture myself uh, humbly on my face before God tonight. That's what I want to leave you with. Um, do you know uh, when you stand before God, and, and, and we're all going to stand before God, all of us, are you going to stand faultless? Are you going to stand guilty? We're all guilty. But because of the blood of Jesus, we can stand faultless. And so I hope tonight that you can claim the blood of Jesus. I hope that you understand you're not perfect because I'm certainly not perfect. And, and there's only one perfect man and his name was Jesus. And it's because of what he did on the cross that you and I can stand before God and be blameless. Thank you once again for joining me. I hope this calms your fears a little bit about uh, last days. Again, feel free to text me or send me a personal message about salvation or end times or any other references that I can help you with. Love everybody.